same clip before it gets cut off. I mean, after it gets cut off, he says, you know, that the neo Nazis should be condemned. He's not talking about them. He's he wants to be clear. Then who's the fine people? Okay, I know. Hold on, but. If you want to make the argument that supporting those who want to maintain the Confederate statues is an example of him, you know, applauding bad people, okay, that's fine, make that argument. But I don't think he was applauding literal neo Nazis. Um, yeah, uh, I there was only two sets of people there: neo Nazis and guys who were supporting Confederate generals who wanted to keep slavery. So there was no fine people on the other side, none. Anna Kasparian has had enough of the woke left. And she's especially frustrated with Cenk Uyghur. She feels he's constantly spreading lies about Donald Trump, right wingers, and Republicans in general, whether it's on Piers Morgan or other shows, just to push his own agenda. In this clip from The Young Turks, Anna goes all out, calling out Cenk and his supporters, who she sees as blindly following these narratives. She's not holding back and is taking a strong stand against what she sees as dishonesty. Let's check out the clip where Anna publicly criticizes Chank Live on this about him saying very fine people on both sides. Let's watch. You had some very bad people in that group, but you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. Of course, that was Charlottesville where the neo Nazis marched saying the Jews will not replace us and then they killed somebody. But uh, the Republicans say, no, 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 guys, be fair. He might have meant the guys who were supporting the Confederate generals who wanted to keep lynching and slavery and use black people as furniture and sell off their babies. Yeah, so in. I've said this before, and I'm no history expert. But I'm pretty sure Confederate generals stood for more than just the awful things people like Cenk Uyghur focus on. In this clip, Anna Kasparian is about to go after him for it. But when it comes to Donald Trump, let's be real. He's been a politician for a while now, since around 2016. So that's about eight years in the game. By now, Trump knows that certain statements can cost him votes, and he's smart enough to stick to what wins elections. When he said, there are good people on both sides, even if he personally thought something controversial, He's too politically savvy to mean neo-Nazis are good people out loud. He's not going to say something that could wreck his chances in an election. It's just unrealistic and misleading for Sank to make that claim. And Anna's about to call him out for it in this clip. Same clip before it gets cut off. I mean, after it gets cut off. He says, you know, that the neo-Nazis should be condemned. He's not talking about them. He's He wants to be clear. Then who's the fine people? Okay, I know. Hold on. But... If you want to make the argument that supporting those who want to maintain the Confederate statues is an example of him, you know, applauding bad people, okay, that's fine, make that argument. But I don't think he was applauding literal neo Nazis. If you're into content like this, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out a lot. Now let's get back to the video. Um, yeah, uh, I there was only two sets of people there: neo Nazis. And guys who were supporting Confederate generals who wanted to keep slavery. So there was no fine people on the other side, none. Nazis and the Confederate lovers are not fine people. They either despise Jews and many other people, or they thought blacks should still be slaves. It's ridiculous to suggest that only two groups of people exist in these debates. Sure, there might be extreme sides, but just because someone opposes tearing down Confederate statues doesn't mean they fully support everything the Confederacy stood for. Most reasonable people, including those who want to preserve historical statues, are glad slavery was abolished. Supporting the preservation of history doesn't automatically mean supporting the dark parts of it. Similarly, not everyone who's part of a group is aligned with its most extreme members. Just because a few in a group might be neo-Nazis doesn't mean everyone in that group shares those beliefs. It's like assuming that if you're a leftist, you must support everything Hassan does. Clearly not true. Common sense should tell us that, but when it comes to Donald Trump, people like Cenk Uyghur seem to lose that sense. They lump everyone together, throwing logic out the window. Thankfully, Anna Kasparian is starting to call him out on this now, as you can see in this clip. There was no fine people, none. And when we have a monster who's running for president, uh, who says, oh, well, maybe they're good people on the Nazi. In fact, he dined with two Nazis, Nick Fuentes and Kanye West. And you go, oh, golly gee, I didn't know they were Nazis, even though Nick Fuentes has been saying it publicly for so long, and Kanye to boot. So, all right, but you guys get to decide, TrumpRackets.com. Uh, last one, implied Kamala Harris exchanged oral sex for career favors versus advocated for increasing oil and gas.
Notice how they're going back to their old tactics again. After seeing Donald Trump debate Kamala Harris, it was clear that Trump came out on top, even though it was closer than his debate with Joe Biden. Honestly, Kamala Harris made herself look bad. Trump didn't even have to do much. Many Democratic candidates struggle when they're asked to take a clear stance on issues. Kamala talks about fixing the border, but she's already in charge of it, and it's worse than before. Plus, she doesn't give any real plans, she just goes off-topic instead of answering questions directly. On top of that, J.D. Vance demolished Tim Walls in their vice presidential debate. Now the Young Turks, especially Cenk Uyghur, are back to their old tricks. They're trying to deflect by focusing on things like Trump's mean tweets. I bet Anna Kasparian is fed up with this too. I think she's only sticking around because of her contract, but once it's up, she's probably out. She even put out a tweet earlier today criticizing Democrats, and it's blowing up, 70,000 likes and counting. The left is coming for her now, trying to cancel her, which she never would have done before. As for the Young Turks, it's the same old story. Their candidates might not be great, Kamala might have lost, and Walds got crushed by Vance, but they keep harping on Trump's mean tweets. Honestly, it's just exhausting. Killing. One destroys the environment, the other one is a loathsome thing to say about Kamala Harris. Look, I don't even want to run that element for you guys, because you get it, you get it. He did it, he you know, talked about oral sex for her and Hillary Clinton. He's a disgusting, vile creature uh, that 40% of the country loves. Okay, so uh, now I promise you the Piers Morgan clip about how he's mentally unbalanced. So while they were trying to tell everybody, oh my God, poor Donald Trump. He's so successful and he's so great, and and you know, uh, but Kamala Harris is the real problem here. I came in to regulate. Let's watch. You want to talk about mental impairment? Come on, guys! It should have been over when he said, "Let's put disinfectant inside our bodies." He's a very, very dumb man. He didn't I mean, say he's, that. He thinks that clean coal is you take out coal and you scrub it clean. He thinks the F-35 stealth fighter is invisible to the naked eye, like Wonder Woman. He took a dementia test and thought it was an IQ test. The other day, he he said that the audience in the debate went crazy for him. There was no audience in the debate. The man has significant mental problems. Oh, I love driving right wingers crazy. Crazy on that show. That they're like, no, it's not true, our beloved. It's pretty obvious that Cenk Uyghur is the one who ends up looking bad in these debates, especially when he's on Piers Morgan. He gets all worked up, yelling and losing his cool because he's getting crushed in those debates. Every time he goes on, it's the same story. He has a meltdown because he's losing the argument. As for Anna Kasparian, you can tell she's just over it. She tries to call him out, but it seems like she realizes there's no point. Tank is too far gone with his obsession. She probably feels stuck and is just waiting for her contract to end so she can move on. What do you think about this whole situation with Anna and Chank on the Young Turks? Let me know in the comments. Trump! Every